The San Diego Musculoskeletal Project presents Knee Injections Part 1, Indications, Risks, and Supplies. Our knee injection videos will be presented in three parts. In Part 1, we'll review the indications, risks, and supplies needed for knee injections. In Part 2, we'll look at some of the pros and cons for different anatomical approaches for knee injections. And finally, in part three, we will review knee injection techniques with a video demonstration. Knee arthrocentesis is indicated for diagnosis of unexplained joint effusions, new monoarthritis, and traumatic effusions or hemarthrosis. Knee aspiration is also useful for symptomatic relief of a large effusion. And knee injections can be used to deliver cortisone or hyaluronic acid for treatment of knee arthritis. Contraindications to knee steroid injections include concomitant infection, including osteomyelitis, cellulitis, bacteremia, or infectious arthritis. We avoid cortisone injection in patients scheduled for impending surgery, as steroids may decrease healing time and increase the risk of infection. As a rule, a primary care provider should never aspirate or inject a knee with an underlying knee joint prosthesis. If there is any problem with a prosthetic knee, the patient should be referred back to orthopedics for diagnostic evaluation and treatment. Hemarthrosis and osteochondral fracture may indicate trauma-induced pain, which is not an indication for steroid injection. Poorly controlled diabetes mellitus may increase the risk of infection, and glucose control may be acutely worsened by a cortisone injection. We typically do not inject patients with an A1C over 9. We often inject patients on Coumadin since knee steroid injections are a nice alternative in arthritis patients who cannot tolerate NSAID treatment, but an uncontrolled coagulopathy may increase the risk of hemarthrosis after injection. Typically, we do not inject patients with an INR greater than 4. Potential risks of cortisone injection are the same regardless of joint site. Joint infection is rare on the order of 1 to 2 per 10,000 injections. Post-injection flare from synovial inflammation can be much more common after hyaluronic acid than cortisone. Other rare potential risks of cortisone injection are tendon rupture, skin atrophy or depigmentation, and rarely systemic hypersensitivity. Risks of side effects are higher with hyaluronate injections, including pain, especially if the knee space is missed, swelling, effusion, and as mentioned, post-injection flare at a much higher rate than cortisone injections. Unfortunately, the hyaluronate flare reaction can mimic an infection with erythema, warmth, and an effusion with a high synovial white count. Post-injection flare is a default diagnosis if the effusion has no crystals and a negative culture. Thus, any red warm knee after an injection should be aspirated and sent for cell count and differential, crystals, gram stain, and culture. Evidence-based data showing pain relief from hyaluronic acid injections are equivocal. At this point, the American College of Rheumatology has no recommendation for the use of intraarticular hyaluronates. However, in 2013, the American Academy of Orthopedics changed the recommendation and recommended against hyaluronic injections for the treatment of knee arthritis, stating that the HA injections do not meet minimal clinically important improvement thresholds. In our experience, hyaluronic acid injections do have a higher rate of post-injection flare and side effects. However, some patients receive longer pain relief with hyaluronates than with steroid knee injections. Unfortunately, it is difficult to predict who will respond to hyaluronic injections, so we allow patients the option of trying HA injections after failing corticosteroid injections with a careful, informed discussion of potential side effects. Now let's move to knee injection supplies. We will list for you the supplies needed for a two syringe, one needle technique, or the lidocaine flashback technique that we teach in our musculoskeletal clinic to students and residents. This method allows providers to confirm the needle is in the joint space before injecting medication. 
Supplies for your joint injection tray include gloves, alcohol swabs, and iodine or chlorhexidine antiseptic swabs. For a cortisone injection, prepare two 6cc syringes with a 21 to 22 gauge 1.5 to 2 inch needle. You can prepare your tray with a larger bore needle and extra syringes if you expect to aspirate a large effusion. Prepare one syringe with 5 cc of 1% lidocaine alone or any other immediate anesthetic. In the second syringe, prepare 4 cc of 0.25% marcaine with 40 mg of triamcinolone. We usually use the higher concentration of 40 mg per mil kenalog in order to just have 1 cc of the triamcinolone solution for a total of 5 cc in the syringe. Also prepare a bottle of ethyl chloride for topical cooling and finally gauze and a band-aid for aftercare. The main difference in supplies for a hyaluronic acid injection is a larger bore needle due to the viscosity of the hyaluronate. We typically use an 18 gauge needle for synvisc, although a 21 to 22 gauge needle is adequate for hyalgan, which is slightly less viscous. If an effusion is present, consider whether you want to send synovial fluid for studies. If so, prepare a green top for crystals, lavender top for cell count, and a red top for culture and gram stain. If there is no clinical concern for infection and the joint fluid has not previously been analyzed, we typically only send synovial fluid for crystals. Crystal disease can be concomitant in an arthritic knee and it may guide future therapy towards cortisone instead of hyaluronic acid or allopurinol for uric acid reduction. This slide summarizes the supplies for a cortisone knee injection. You can print this slide as a resource to prepare an injection tray in advance. This concludes part one of our knee injection series. Please join us for part two, knee injection anatomical approach options, and part three, knee aspiration and injection techniques. This video was brought to you by the San Diego Musculoskeletal Project. Please look for more of our videos on the SD MSK Project YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.